So, <clears throat> this is the next lecture, lecture four, in my neuroblastoma series. And this and the next one will be the crucial, crucial one for the trainee in pathology. Um, the other prior lectures were more introductory, but this lecture will deal with morphological patterns of neuroblastoma, and the next lecture will tie it all based on the differentiation scheme that we were looking at in the previous, in lecture three. So, the, the first, um, we mentioned previously that neuroblastomas are made out of cells that are recapitulating the development of the sympathetic adrenal lineage. And the first category of cells that are very, very primitive and that don't have very much differentiation and that re really recapitulate the early neural crest cells that have just migrated off would be like an undifferentiated neuroblastoma. Because that's why there's not much differentiation. It would be an undifferentiated. And in an undifferentiated neuroblastoma, you have a lot of these cells that have a high NC ratio, a high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. They have blastic or dark nu nucleoli, so they're hyperchromatic. And the other thing that these cells have is a lot of mitotic figures and a lot of apoptotic figures. And I just you know, drew the apoptosis as sort of a blebbing nucleus. And that's really what they look like. And um, Dr. Shimada called this karyorexis. So mitosis and karyorexis are quite abundant in the undifferentiated neuroblastoma. So this is a pattern. This is a true small round blue cell tumor because the pathologist cannot make the diagnosis on the basis of light mi microscopy alone. You need to do various tests to to convince yourself that it really is a neural type of phenotype. So you could do markers like NSE or PGP 9.5. In other words, you need antibodies. You need immunoperoxidase is basically needed by the pathologist to make a diagnosis. So if as a pathologist you're looking at a tumor and it's composed of these small round blue cells and it turns out to be within the neuroblastoma family, and your question is, what kind of a tumor is this? In other words, it's so undifferentiated, you don't know what kind of a tumor un is this. It could very well be an undifferentiated neuroblastoma. The next sort of pattern that we see is that you still have some small round blue cells. You still have some undifferentiated cells. But you have some cells that acquire eccentric nuclei. They start to look more neural. <clears throat> they acquire eccentric nuclei nucleoli. The chromatin is more peripherally condensed and is softer in the middle. They have a somewhat of a triangular cytoplasm. And these are really what these cells are that are starting to re recapitulate in various stages of de development a neuron with its axons and its dendrites. And, and that sort of you know, as the cell is trying to do this, as the cell is trying to become a neuron, it's sort of an early neuron we call it a neuroblast because it's already quite neural. It's not undifferentiated. It's already a little bit neural. So we call this a neuroblast. And you know, early on in the more in the worse, more poorly differentiated tumors, you see, um, you know, a lot of small round blue cells, a lot of undifferentiated cells, and occasion neuroblasts. And the other thing that as cells are starting to become neuroblasts, they're sort of in between this state and this state, one of the things that they do is they form these circles. They play ring around the rosy. And pathologists make much of the various distinctions between the morphology, but it turns out to probably not be that important. But things that have a neural phenotype like to create these little circles. And if if there's substance in, in the entire middle of it, and I'll discuss in a second what the substance is, we call it a pseudo-rosette. But if there's a true empty ring in the middle, we call it a true rosette. And there's names like Homer Wright rosette, but I, I, I would actually discourage people from getting too caught up in the morphological eponyms, especially in the era where we have so much ancillary investigation, and the biological story is so much more complex and so much more important than eponymous insistence on the concreteness of certain morphological patterns. We're, in my opinion, moving away from that era. But, um, <clears throat> you know, we discussed how neuroblasts are starting to have axons and dendrites. And axons and dendrites do aggregate, and they create, you know, sort of 
tissue. They create matter. And that matter had this sort of soft, fibrillary appearance. It looks fibrillary. It looks like fibrous, because that's what they are. And that's what we call neuropil. And a neuropil is made up of axons and dendrites. And that's the neuropil. And so you start to see more neuroblastic differentiation, pseudorosettes, true rosettes, neuropil. And then what you've got here is, well, as we, you know, as we start to move along the spectrum, your undifferentiated neuroblastoma, and then as you start to see some differentiation, you move into your poorly differentiated, and then ultimately into your differentiating neuroblastomas. And then, as things move along, the other thing that starts to happen is that not only do you start to see the elaboration of more neural characteristics, both in terms of the cytology, so you see nuclear characteristics both in terms of the cytology and the stroma, and the cytology and the stroma here are neural. The other thing that you start to see is the acquisition of a different type of stroma, the true stroma. So maybe I shouldn't have called the neuropil stroma. We could just call it the pericellular material. So the cytology and really let's just change this. We'll call it pericellular material just to avoid, avoid confusion. Pericellular. And, and that's neural. So you have this neuropil and these neural type of cells. But the other thing that starts to happen as things move along is you start to get a true stroma, a true connective tissue stroma, a true connective tissue stroma. And that is recapitulating Schwannian stroma, or the glia that we see in the um, peripheral nervous system. And in this case, they're Schwann cells, because centrally it's oligodendral, oligodendrocytes, and centrally they're Schwann cells. And it looks very different. It's a harder, sort of more gritty material. Grossly, it's yellow, and they have these wavy nuclei. And then you start to see neuroblastic differentiation. So you have your neural component and your Schwannian component. So Early differentiation is predominantly neural. And as you really get towards progressive differentiation, you start to see the elaboration of Schwannian stroma. And, um, and, and, and that's a very important feature. And that's sort of a more mature. So when you start to see lots of Schwannian stroma, that's a sign of very progressive maturation. And so if this would be your poorly differentiated to differentiating, once you start to see lots of Schwannian stroma, it could still be poorly differentiated. When you start to see more, it's differentiating. And then at some point, it crosses the threshold. When there's greater than 50% Schwannian stroma, it's no longer called a neuroblastoma, and it's called a ganglioneuroblastoma or a ganglioneuroma. And, again, and they're both pretty... pretty well-behaved tumors, except for one type of ganglioneuroblastoma, the so-called nodular. But we really won't get into that, and that's sort of a detail. But most of your ganglioneuroblastomas and your ganglioneuromas are very well-behaved, and in fact, your ganglioneuromas are actually considered benign. And right now, Dr. Shimada, um, and when he's asked, how do you distingu distinguish a very mature ganglioneuroblastoma from a ganglioneuroma? What's the cutoff? He answers really the presence of any neuropil. If there's still neuropil present, if the cells are not completely surrounded, so if the cells are not completely surrounded by Schwannian stroma, then, then, then if there's any neuropil, then he still calls it a ganglioneuroblastoma. But on the other hand, if you get to a point where the Schwannian stroma is so great that it completely surrounds your cell and there's no more, let's just completely surround a cell, it's almost like fossilized in Schwannian stroma, and there's no more what Dr. Schematic calls naked neurites, then this tumor he calls a ganglioneuroma, which is totally benign. So with that, that's just a basic or overview of the basic morphological pattern.